I'll start you off with a little bit of a challenging question, I think. So I'll, talk, I'll read the question, we'll talk about the answer, then we'll talk about uh, this question as, like I said, a reason why I chose a lot of these questions. An 11-year-old male has a history of cystic fibrosis, complains of difficulty breathing. He tells you he's been coughing up thick mucus. Vital signs are pulse of 92, respiratory rate of 24, blood pressure is 118, 118 on 76. He's setting at 91% on room air. You should. All right, classic registry style. It's tight, uh, tight question. Three sentences, really two, two sentences of facts and vital signs, and then it gives you the you should. You should next, you should first, right? In this case, it's just you should. So I'll tell you what, let me give you the answer here. The answer is D, administer humidified oxygen. Now, in this, there are a couple of issues. I think there are probably a few of you at the EMT level out there, maybe some at the paramedic level that said, I don't know a lot about cystic fibrosis, right? I, I don't know what that means. So let's say that we took cystic fibrosis out of this. 11-year-old male complains of difficulty breathing. He tells you he's been coughing up thick mucus. And there's his vital signs. All right, so we're not going to do C. We're not going to assist his ventilations because he's talking to you, appears to have a complaint that he can share with you, that he's been coughing and his vital signs don't show failure. So we're not going to assist his ventilation. Now we have choices A and B, administer a bronchodilator, but he's not wheezing. And with the mucus in the airway, I'm not sure that's gonna make a difference. And the same thing for A is applying CPAP in this case. CPAP can work on bronchoconstriction, can work on fluid um, that we have. You know, if we have a little bit of pulmonary edema in there, that is great right? But the concept of administering humidified oxygen, while well, you may say, well, they didn't talk about that, they didn't do it, you've got to go through and say, which one of these is the best answer, right? So even if you don't know cystic fibrosis is a, a inherited a chronic disease uh, where you have that constant uh, thick mucus, the answer would be humidified oxygen would help break that mucus up because he doesn't need to be ventilated. He's not wheezing. He doesn't have bronchoconstriction and CPAP's not going to do that. So 63 year old male complains of shortness of breath. His skin is cyanotic and he auscultate wheezes in all lung fields. So he has difficulty breathing. He's cyanotic, which shows that he's uh, got a certain amount of hypoxia going on. We see he's 92%. And wheezes indicates bronchoconstriction. And that bronchoconstriction is going to limit the amount of uh, oxygen, you know, air with oxygen that gets to the alveoli. So his pulse is surprisingly not very high. Respiratory rate's high. His blood pressure appears uh, adequate, and there's no issue with the pulse pressure. Saturation's along the low side. So let's look at these increased capillary shunting and increased cell membrane permeability. I think we're getting a little out of the range of what we're looking for there. Now we have decreased alveolar ventilation, which means that we're not getting air to the alveoli. That sounds like a keeper to me, but let's check D. You don't ever pick one without reading them all. That's another good test taking strategy. Decreased cardiac output. But I gotta tell you, with a blood pressure of 142 on 88 and no compensation with that pulse of 72, I don't think we have cardiac output problems. I think he's cyanotic because of that bronchoconstriction. Um, and he is keeping uh, from getting air with oxygen into his alveoli. And that decreased alveolar ventilation is this guy's issue. So remember, cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. It's how much blood is pumped from the heart in a minute. This cardiac output uh, is probably okay because his blood pressure is okay. And his pulse is normal. He's not compensating. So I think uh, we go with the first choice with everyone here. 
and say C, because this is a ventilation issue. It's not a circulation or a permeability issue um, or a cardiac output issue. This is decreased alveolar ventilation. So while resuscitating a one month old female, you achieve ROSC. She is unresponsive and has a rapid brachial pulse. You should next. <clears throat> First, we have to know what ROSC is. ROSC is return of spontaneous circulation, which means you get a pulse back. She's unresponsive. She has a rapid brachial pulse. So you should next. All right, so we see that she has a rapid brachial pulse. So we know that if the pulse is below 100, we're going to keep compressing. But since it's rapid, I'm going to say, okay, we're not going to compress. And you should next assess her breathing. All right, that's a good choice. After someone is uh, gets a pulse back, an adequate pulse back, we would check their breathing to see if we continue to need to ventilate. But let's see if that's what we do next. Begin to cool her. Oh, no, not a one-month-old female. Pre-hospital cooling. Um, we want to prevent overheating. We don't do a lot of cooling. We have trouble controlling it really well. And since she has a pulse, you wouldn't analyze the rhythm with the AED. So that makes the correct answer B. Uh, we would assess her breathing. She has the pulse back. That's great. Now let's check her breathing and see if we need to ventilate her or if she is in fact going to start breathing uh, adequately on her own. 